Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I've got plenty of things to talk about today. we got some city council where they're going to be talking about a lot of different things that the city's doing, in t uh, which include uh, continuing coverage of flood insurance. Otherwise, uh, if the city doesn't approve of this, then uh, many people could lose their flood insurance. So I'll talk about that and more for your city council report as we get into it. But we're going to kick things off with a little bit of weather. It is warming up. I promise. I I promise. It's it's warming up. Uh, 32 degrees outside. High is 34. You're going to see that pretty much all week long. Uh, you can see a lot of snow. It's just the right amount of temperature for the snow. It's cold enough for the uh, the rain to freeze. Have some nice snow throughout this whole week, which means you guys are probably going to see some good snow on the slopes going into your weekend. So if we look at it right now, this is from onthesnow.com, you can see that a lot of places have had a lot of snow. Some places have um, had a little bit of snow, but uh, most places have had snow in general. Whitefish had uh, six, inches, six inches in the last 24 hours with uh, 19 inches in 72 hours. Um, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area looks like they just got a dump of snow, 18 inches. Uh, Big Sky Resort uh, had three inches in the last 72 hours, but that's sure to change in the next uh, week. Um, Snowball had six, in the, six inches in the last 72 hours, and then Bridger Bowl had three inches in the last 72 hours. Many of these places, you'll be seeing a lot more snow lately this week as well. Let's talk about some news things that are happening in local news. Last weekend, the University of, uh, University of Mountain Line teamed up to help folks in need this weekend of negative 20 degree temps with winds, mind you. Uh, Saturday morning, around 45 people were transported from downtown Missoula to the Salvation Army, acting as a warming center for folks. The Mountain Line Downtown Transfer Center housed folks until buses from both the line and uh, University's UDASH picked up people around 6 a.m. to about 8 a.m., where they transported them across town. Well, many people who have disabilities um, also um, suffer from homelessness as well. The, P uh, the POV has already uh, stated that they have reached max capacity last November with 175 people. Um, they say that the Salvation Army and Transfer Center has provided much needed alleviation to the POV. Uh, they are also looking for volunteers through Missoula Rises to help out with the Mountain Line Transfer Center to be open for folks to get warm before being transferred to the Salvation Army for those mornings. So you can volunteer and you can take action going to Missoula Rises through their Facebook page. All right, let's talk about some state news. Um, Sled dog racing has been a big thing in Montana for many, many, many years, and this time a dentist won. Um, a dentist en route, and not the root canal kind of route, to mush his way to a 300-mile victory. <coughs> Brett uh, Bregman of Great Falls, 48, pulled into the last checkpoint um, in northeast of Ovando around 3.30 p.m. Uh, the other um, Monday, hours ahead of four pursuers in the 300-mile race. Um, he proceeded to victory um, um, near Lincoln, where the finish line is. Uh, Bergman came in around 6.02 a.m. Tuesday morning, three and a half hours ahead of everyone else. Darby's Gabe uh, Dunham competed the race at 9.18 a.m., followed by Clayton Perry of Power, Montana, at 9.38 a.m. The final two teams, guided by Damon Raymaker of Fountain, Minnesota, and Cindy uh, Galay of uh, Minnesota, crossed at 11.39 a.m. and 11.40 a.m., so they had a little exciting race at the very end. But of course, this marked also the first time the three top finishers were Montanan and also breaks the seven straight streak of women winning the race in the last seven years. All right, in national news, uh, nine months ago, the Parkland shooting was enough for CEO of Dick's Sporting Goods, Ed Stacks. This is from NPR.org. Um, Ed Stacks from Dick's Sporting Goods has taken a tougher stance on gun control by updating his policy within his stores that no one under the age of 21 is allowed to buy a gun and also uh, taking out any of those assault-looking rifles as well. Um, Ed Stacks spoke out during a New York Times conference saying, and this is just fresh out of the Parkland shooting, and this is what Ed Stacks says. He says, I'm not embarrassed to say I viewed as a relatively tough guy. He also went on to say, I wouldn't characterize myself as a crier, and that weekend I watched those kids and watched those parents, and I, had cried, I hadn't cried so, so much since my mother passed away. Stacks changed 
Uh, Stax change has been remarkable for several reasons. Dix is the biggest sporting goods realtor in the country and has a, sub, um, a dedicated to hunting and fishing uh, called Field and Stream. Stax himself is a gun owner and was a longtime Republican donor. And Dix is uh, uh, based in Pittsburgh suburb in West Philadelphia, uh, um, Western Pennsylvania, where the gun rights debate is heated. Many folks that they say will never buy a uh, gun from Dix Sporting Goods ever again, while others say it hasn't affected their buying habits. Dix exec executives ran the shooter's name through the internal systems and found that months earlier, the re retailer had sold him a gun while following all state laws. It was was a different kind and wasn't used in the shooting. Still, in interviews that followed, Stax would point out how the sale illustrated a broken system which he, which he wanted lawmakers to fix. And so those are your news reports. You can find out more by going to Helena Independent Record. You can go to the Missoulian. You can also go to NPR.org. There's always a lot of stuff going on, but we have a lot of programs happening on MCAT, and here is a little taste of what you guys can see this week on MCAT Channel 189 through Charter Cable. It was named after the Missoula County, hence USS Missoula. But here's another connection right here. It carried the 28th uh, Regiment, 5th Marine Division, to Iwo Jima. On board was <clears throat> Louis Charlo, a Marine, who was a grands grandson of Salish Chief, great grandson of Salish Chief Charlo from the frontier period here right. in Missoula. Uh, he, deplo he landed on Iwo Jima with the 5th Marine Division. He was among the party that helped to raise the uh, first flag over Iwo Jima before the famous Joe Rosenthal photo of this small oh, Mount flag. Surabachi, yeah. Once yeah. you present an idea in a commissioned work, basically you have to fulfill that particular idea. Uh, and so it, it, it taught me how to stick with an idea. Um, when you get an idea, stick with it, rather than changing it up. Uh, and I think for a lot of artists uh, who are working, um, should definitely try a few commissions, because I think it makes you a stronger artist. I think it, uh, um, it can take you further into your work. Uh, and, uh, and so for me, it did that. Um, so we do another midnight run to Great Falls and uh, go to get him, and, and we go in and, and pay the bail. And when he comes out, he's like dazed almost. And I was like, oh God, what did they do to you in there? Um, he just had this really strange look on his face, and he wasn't talking at all. And we get in the car, and we're starting to drive back, and he's like, you guys, I have some stuff I need to tell you. And first of all, he says, uh, I'm not 27, I'm 37. And secondly, he says, I am not in the military at all. And this stuff is going to come to light very quickly. And essentially, once we get back to Missoula, I'm going to have to flee, right? Like, flee the law, like, go on the lamb. I was like, does this really happen to normal people? Like, is this like a normal thing and just end up going on the lamb? So, Baba Belushki. We got CGI Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Okay. So, so is there like a, a timer where you're just like five, go, five, or do five, I yeah. do I just start yeah, drawing? Say, we say go. Are you ready? Um. Are you marked? Yeah. Okay. Get set. Go. I'm not gonna do this one. Uh, a seat. Okay. What kind of artistic tips would you yeah. say to some artists yeah. out there? Uh, you know. It's better to fail fast than it is to be stuck on a project for hours on end. Okay. Fail fast. You know what? You don't have to be all. looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, guys. Welcome back. And if you want to... Um, subscribe or like uh, Dude I Did Just Drew. You can like them on their Facebook page and you can subscribe to their YouTube channel. Dude I Just Drew. They're always looking for suggestions for their upcoming live stream, which is happening this Saturday at 7 p.m. You guys can check it out via Facebook by liking Dude I Just Drew. All right, let's talk about some city council stuff. So city council, they're talking about a lot of things. And one of the things that they want to talk about is uh, kicking things off with a very passionate um, public comment. Um, 
a strong start for uh, the city of Missoula. And this is Anthony J. Cox gave a passionate speech on court surcharges that are being refunded um, from as far back as 2003. And he is not happy about paying it in the first place. Jim Nugent, the city attorney, made a quote. Uh, there's no negligence here, referring to the potential insurance claim. That's a quote by you. No negligence here. If you're the city attorney and it was deemed by the Montana Supreme Court, the highest court in the state, that these were illegal surcharges done right here in Missoula for all this time, how come you claim, quote, there's no negligence here, unquote? I don't understand. Please, any one of you, make a comment on this. We are waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cox. All right, so that was um, his reaction uh, to it. Uh, last year, uh, the city um, revealed that uh, a new law, a new state law, to refund um, additional surcharges like processing fees for um, court, people working in the court system to help them pay for the people to process people. That was done from 2003 to about, I think, 2018. And so far, um, at first it was $5, and then recently it was up to $25 for the surcharges. And now you're able to get that refund. Um, if you're able to go to uh, the county's website, which is co.mt.us. Oh, actually, sorry about that. It's um, co.missoula.mt.us. And you can go to their page. And it's just, you know, refund request. And it's, you know, you can locate it online, State of Montana's refund request form, and you can submit it to Helena's office. And so far, you know, um, one of the um, things that um, he also mentions, Anthony uh, J. Cox also mentions, is that um, <clears throat> it would cost a lot more money as well to hire the people to process these refunds just as much as it did to uh, process the other things, uh, to process the processing back from 2003 to 2018. So the court records, if you want to know, uh, you can go to the Missoula County Treasurer to ask about a refund. If you ever paid a court document, let's say you have a parking fee or anything like that, you want to be like, Oh, I, I've been here before. Maybe I'll be able to get some money from the county. So, uh, so far, there's about a quarter million dollars worth of refunds that still need, basically need to be refunded. See if you need to be refunded. Okay, moving on. Uh, here is a little uh, taste of black. Uh, here is uh, Greg Martin, resident. He talks about black history in his own backyard. My neighbor's house on 1427 Phillips Street looks like any other Missoula residential home on the west side. It belongs to a young couple with two adorable children. What I didn't know for nearly all of the 19 years I've lived on that block, and what many of you may not know either, is that my neighbor's house was once the site of St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, active from 1910 until the late 1930s. At that address, a congregation of the first generation of fully emancipated black Americans held regular Sunday services. But the church was much more than that. It was the social center and the foundation of support for the town's small but burgeoning black population. Montana historian Anthony Wood observed that the few towns in Montana that maintained an active black population in the early 20th century were able to develop local black businesses, fraternal organizations, civic groups, and women's groups as a result of having a church to support them. In every one of the aforementioned categories, he wrote, the local church was not only a factor of their success, but vital to their very existence. St. Paul AME held unique events, like the Emancipation Proclamation Celebration, held there on January 1st, 1914. There were annual Jubilee concert Jubilee choir performances where the church was packed with both black and white residents to hear traditional southern spiritual songs. For a number of years, church members put on a large southern barbecue in Greeno Park that reportedly drew nearly 500 residents. They faced an uphill battle, though. West Side residents were outraged when they found the church was going to be located there. They pressured real estate agents and property owners not to sell or rent to black residents in the district for fear that the church would draw more black people to the neighborhood. Twice in its existence, the church's Sunday services were interrupted by members of the University City Chapter Number 16 of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Missoula's local KKK chapter. 
By the end of the Great Depression and World War II, the church was gone, and Missoula's black population, already very low, plummeted even further. February is Black History Month. It can be something of an abstraction for many in this town where our black population is so low. But as writer Matt Novak said in an article about the racial exclusion of the state of Oregon, the racial composition of any American city is a product of its history. This may seem painfully obvious, but it's something that we need to say out loud and type in bold letters to fully appreciate. And so in recognition of Black History Month, I ask the city to find a way to recognize that history. We can surely start by finding some way to remember that the first children of emancipated black Americans came to Missoula and started a church to try to build a life that fulfilled the promise embedded in this country's founding documents. I have written a history of the church on the website Medium. It's called Hiding in Plain Sight, St. Paul <clears throat> AME Church and Missoula's Forgotten Black History. I have emailed a link to this research to the city's historic preservation officer and would be happy to send one to any of you. All right. So that was Greg Martin uh, speaking for um, a forgotten uh, chapter in Missoula's history. Um, but of course, um, Missoula, um, and also in terms of Black History Month, is the African American studies here at the University of Montana is one of the oldest, one of the top five oldest African American studies colleges in the United States. I didn't know that until probably about five or six years ago, but this is something that you know, a, a little trivia note about Missoula. Um, Hidden Plain Sight, Missoula's Forgotten Black History is available online, and it was published back in November of 2018. You guys can check it out, and you can kind of uh, get a nice um, history of Missoula. Um, here is the, you know, the page of where it comes from, you know, different formation of the a AME Church. Um, yeah. And there are a bunch of articles, and you can check out kind of like the history from the articles and from, you know, w research that was done. Greg Martin did a lot of research through there as well. All right, so let's move on to another uh, topic on City Council. Um, Michael Workman talks about the city and university working together to open the Downtown Transfer Center for extended hours. And this was also something I mentioned in the Missoulian article about helping folks um, who are houseless. So here is Michael Workman talking about looking for volunteers. Um, for people to uh, just basically open up the uh, transfer center downtown um, just so people can be warm while they wait for a bus to transfer them over to the Salvation Army. I want to start out uh, by thanking you all for opening up the transfer station for our homeless community here. Um, it's no doubt that that could have saved lives this weekend. It was extremely cold and it was in high use. Um, I specifically want to thank um, Jordan has for um, working with the bus schedules. It's been really incredible. And Julie Merritt for showing up, and Brian von Losberg for coordinating, and also Heidi West. And I apologize if I miss anybody um, who might have been working on the background on this. Um, uh, the shelter, I just want to give a few updates on where the shelter's out. So um, there's basically been an average number of about 15 to 30 people in use of the shelter um, throughout the day, um, peaking at around 45 at night. More people come at night um, before the um, bus is leaving. Um, so it's obvious that there's a growing need for this. Um, and we believe that this um, these numbers will continue to grow as people become aware of it. We've already started to see new faces around there. Um, also, our coalition has been working tirelessly on this issue, and I know some of you have too. Um, and All right, so um, that's Michael Workman, and if you want to volunteer, you can uh, work with them. Um, you know, it's Michael Workman's coalition wants to extend the need for ho houseless um, since Salvation Army. Uh, one of the things that uh, is also happening is by the time March happens, Salvation Army will no longer be used as a warming center. So it's like two weeks away, something that was implemented last November to keep people warm during the winter uh, months. Um, Hopefully it'll get warmer, but so far it looks like uh, winter is still upon us um, this first week, but we might be seeing some warmer temperatures going into the month of March. But by then, we won't know until it happens. Many things have yet to be done since this is an exper since the Salvation Army has an expiration date, and many folks during the public comment want to figure out ways to have a long-term effects uh, so people don't fall under the parameters 
that the Poverella puts in place um, for most people, and also the Poverella Center had max capacity. So Jordan Hess, uh, later in the meeting, um, reflects on um, what has been said by the community and his efforts with ASUM transportation. It is a temporary solution, and it's really a disaster relief solution brought on by um, extreme cold temperatures. Um, and I, like many of you, are committed to a long-term solution that we'll that we'll figure out um, in due time with the proper um, with the proper process and the proper resources. Um, for now, this is the best we can do, and, and we're doing it. Um, so thanks to everyone who made it happen. And so far, uh, fifty thousand dollars were raised to the Salvation Army to keep warm for those months until March. Um, moving on, let's uh, talk about. Um, uh, some of the pre special presentations, um, one, of, one of them really stuck out, and it was the Missing and Murdered Indigenous, uh, Indigenous Women's Awareness Day, which is happening February 14th, which is tomorrow, uh, on Valentine's Day, which is more prevalent to really think about um, the importance of domestic violence, especially within indigenous populations. So here is John Engen reflecting on the proclamation. Uh, we've been reading this proclamation for a number of years, sadly, um, but it's important and I really appreciate the folks who brought this issue first to council. Um, and I can tell you that uh, if there's anything encouraging afoot, it's that uh, the issue is now being heard by more folks and paid more attention to because of the advocacy in this room and elsewhere. Um, with regard in particular to Ms. Charlo, uh, some of you may know that uh, Detective Guy Baker, uh, Missoula Police Detective, is uh, one of the state's leading authorities on human trafficking. Uh, I had a phone conversation um, with Guy uh, about a week and a half ago, and we spent considerable time talking about Germain, and I can tell you that Guy Baker takes uh, takes his job seriously, and in this case personally. Uh, and based on that conversation, I know he's not going to rest until we know what's happened with Miss Charlo and someone is brought to justice. So thank you all for being here. I'm grateful. All right, so we have another quote from uh, Kathy uh, Littleleaf, and she is a um, Black uh, Feet tribe member, and she's with uh, substance abuse um, programs through the, um, the pain center. So here's Kathleen Littleleaf, and uh, this is what she had to say um, about this proclamation. Missoula County is not immune, and we as a community has lost one of our tribal members from the Salish, Confederate Salish Kootenai tribe. Uh, she went missing, or Jermaine Charlotte went missing in June 2018, and she continues to still be missing. As a community, we, we have work to do in making the city of Missoula as safe as it can be, and by that, awareness of missing and murdered indigenous women issues needs to continue to be addressed, especially on a legislative level. Our local representatives need to be doing all they can to support legislation, which brings some solutions to addressing the crisis we are in as a community. Hannah's Act was just recently presented at the Capitol as HB 21. This kind of legislation is necessary because Montana ranks number two in the nation with the highest number of missing, murdered Indigenous women. Hannah and so um, um, one of the things that happened recently in the news is that there was somebody who went missing in December. Um, in the, it, it was released in the tribal informational thing, but it wasn't um, issued to the federal government until a certain time. And there was a, too long of a gap between that back in December. And um, John Tester has been a proponent in being a driving force behind uh, an act known as Savannah's Act, which will help... Uh, um, federal organizations gather data from tribes of missing and uh, murdered indigenous women and beyond. So that's what we're going to be talking about for this uh, state's legislature. Uh, so keep on looking up Savannah's Act and see how the Montana legislature will move forward on this. Flood insurance. I, w I promised I was going to talk a little bit about this, but it's uh, it's a flood insurance study. It's a federal sponsor that is required by communities to do a study in floodplains and mapping. Uh, county and city have done this study, um, but this time they're at the EPA and the uh, 
FIS is asking the city of Missoula and the county to look up the Swan River area. Uh, this study will start March 7th, and to keep this short, this is uh, for insurance reasons and to make sure the development will, would be well informed and about a floodplain at the Swan River. Um, of course, if the city doesn't um, do this, people can lose their flood insurance coverage in the county of Missoula. Of course, you can see this entire meeting and more and more by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But also, you can go to mcat.org to learn more about your city government and your uh, city of Missoula. Um, we are hosting a summer camp, I mean a spring flicks camp uh, starting uh, March 25th that goes into the 29th, which is uh, lines up with MCPS's spring break. And this is for kids 9 to 13. Um, but of course, you can always call and ask us about any uh, deals. Scholarships are available for some kids who are unable to pay. Um, it's a fun activities driven um, program which involves uh, video cameras, stop, an stop animation, games, and all sorts of fun things that kids can do while also learning. Um, they learn something. Yep. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's talk about, um, I got a new uh, dub and stuff for you guys. It is uh, Wednesday, and I didn't do it the last week because I had a little tease from our dude I just drew. But this time, I do have a dub and stuff for you guys. And next week, I'll probably have a dude I just drew highlight. So um, without further ado, here is the movie um, Storm in a Teacup from 1937. Get out of my way! Get out of my way! I'm going to see him if this is the last thing I well, do. Well, challenge accepted. <clears throat> well, I never. Oh, hello there. Do you know where I can find good help these days? <clears throat> Whatever. I've just been so worried. He's been working. Yes, he's brilliant. Well, you don't know what I know. A thimble can protect a finger from a needle. Not since my youth did I truly understand what my mother went through. He can do whatever he wants. I don't care. I want to talk to him. If he doesn't come out in five seconds, I'm going to scream. Oh, Bootsikins, is that you? I've been trying to get a hold of you, but you, your chambermaids right, and your enough. other maids... Well, you have been working late, and maybe some hmm, time away with your wife would be very... Um, Listen, my dear, I have deadlines. I'm so sorry, ma'am. It's... No, no, don't worry about me. Please escort my wife out of here. I needed to finish my deeper understanding of the female mind. I do not wish to be disturbed by women. Well, it's really ironic if you think about it. It's his brilliance that put food on the table, and all I do is just get emotional and cry, and then I eat. He's just a rider on constant rider's block. Well, I'm going to find out just what's going on in there. Well, excuse me. Oh, oh I bet you um, weren't sir, expecting I'm, me I'm really... so soon, but I've been expecting you. And you. And everything. What do you mean? I have been planting seeds of doubt. Doubt? Elementary. It's why I act a certain way around my wife. And then I gauge a reaction and see how she reacts. So like psychology or something? Nope, just an autobiography. Hold on there, mister. You must be wondering why I'm doing this, aren't you? Well, the thought crossed my mind. Hmm. Things are getting interesting. <laughs> well, I... Listen, you have to leave, and don't come back. Oh, I'm shocked, but I'm not really now surprised. You must leave me to my work. My work is very important, and you are not. Oh, jeez. Emotional pain worse. So, uh, you gotta be quite a dick. <laughs> Where were we, since we were so rudely interrupted? As a man, being a man in the man's man world, it's hard to be a woman. Well, I got in an idea. In man's world. Why don't you use her? Oh, 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 uh, interview your wife. What would she know about women? I was born with other men, and they were great. Just, you know, us men hanging out. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Hold on, Kip. I just need to do one thing. Stop calling me Kip. Oh, oh no, no, <laughs> no, no just out oh. with you. And uh, if you ever think about coming back, uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure she won't be back for quite some time, so we can get back to the autobiography. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. You know, there's plenty of other pretty girls out there. You don't have to start oh, that sorry. pretty girl. <laughs> you have a lot to learn about women. <laughs> well, that was... Um... 
Interesting. I didn't even title it at the end, so um, ignore that last part. I'll have to re-upload some footage. Anyways, let's talk about some events that are happening inside, uh, in and around the city of Missoula. It's time for your Missoula events. Uh, kicking off your Wednesday morning is indoor fun with Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center. A bunch of indoor fun for kids to enjoy. Empower Place is a great place for kids to uh, pick up books, but while also having a lot of education programs that happen at the Missoula Food Bank. It's going to be at there in Power Place starting at 10.30 a.m. Hands-on Science, Life Underwater. Spectrum Discovery is going to help you explore a variety of creatures swimming in the layers of the ocean as we investigate aquatic life at the Discovery Bench today at Spectrum Discovery Center. They open at 11. And that's pretty much all afternoon. Uh, Sound, Soap, and Sanctuary with Garden City Brass, a University Congressional Church, UCC. Um, and this is going to be like one of those 20-minute concerts. So it's going to be really short. The concert begins at 12.10 and is followed by a soup and bread luncheon. And it's going to happen at the um, University Congregational Church at the University of Montana. It's off of Helen Street, I believe, and it will feature Garden City Brass, uh, Bill Klautz, uh, and um, Jeff um, Stickney, um, Trumpet, Tommy Kent, and John Rose Trombone. Garden City Brass will perform um, Modern Works. All right, Scra um, Scrabble and Bridge is going to be happening at the Missoula Senior Center and it usually has a lunch in there. Um, it's for people who are interested in the Senior Center, but also they have a thrift store in their basement. You can check that out as well, and that's all at 1230. Forest Forum, University of Montana hosts a lot of forums, and it's February, so it is the month of forums, lecture series, and all of those things happening. But today, they're having a uh, Forestry Student Association Forest Forum. Wow, that's a mouthful. A series of conversations on Conscious consumption. And this is from 1 to 2 p.m. in the CLAP building, room 452. Good luck finding that. Uh, panelists will present the di and discuss the complex conditions of coffee and tea production from business and research perspectives and to give insight to how conscious citizens can interpret and influence the industry. Jim, uh, Chap uh, Jim Chapman, Black Roasting Coffee Company, Dr. Uh, Scott Miller, Elephant Friendly Certified Teas, and Jake uh, Krillick, uh, Lake Missoula Tea Company, will all be in attendance to talk about this. Missoula Public Library Memory Cafe. Uh, memory Cafe is a safe, welcoming, supportive uh, space for individuals experiencing memory loss, their caregivers, and family members. Missoula Public Library, this happens from 2 to 4 p.m. The Drum Brothers um, uh, will be uh, be the local band, will be there, uh, meets in the um, large meeting room at the Missoula Public Library. 4 p.m., 10 and under tennis. Parks and Recreation are hosting a 10 and under tennis for kids into a game with specialized equipment and shorter court dimensions, all tailored to their ages and sizes. And this is going to be at the Parks and Recreational Sports and Wellness Gym, which is 1515 Fairview. Registration is $50 or $40 for a city card resident discount. And getting a city card is actually really easy. You just live in the city. You bring a piece of mail and be like, here's my address. It's like, oh, that's in the city. Here's your city card. That's how you get a city card. That easy. You just go to Current Aquatic Center. Go to, to the front desk and be like, here you go. And they're like, oh, thank you. Great. Can I get a city card? It's like, yeah, you know, it might take a little while. It might be in the mail. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I mean, is it? are they going to give you like a card card or is it just like um, uh, just a simple, uh, I don't know, uh, a certificate of authenticity? <laughs> um, all right. That's basically what's happening. 10 and under 10 is for kids. It's fun. 15, 15 Fairview. Uh, Ucanix class. Eucaustic Eucaustics, encaustics, encaustics. I probably should have uh, read this a little bit more before I'm just reading this now. It's a workshop ideal for artists who are curious about uh, eucanics, um, ooh, but don't have any previous experience. It's an art class. It topics include health and safety, um, how to get started, and the most popular techniques and applications. You will have the opportunity to create a piece in class, allowing them to ask questions to work and learn at the same time. And it's a three-hour class, and it all starts at 5.30 p.m. Um, and of course, they've been two hours in the past. And so that's going to be at Zootown Arts Community Center tonight at 5.30. India, chaotic fluidity notes of rural health intern. So this is part of the Global Public Health Lecture Series, and it happens Wednesday nights uh, 6.30 p.m. in the Gallagher Business Building, room 123. And it's, you know, a student of public health and exercise science at the University of Montana comes and uh, uh, when they're intern or they're overseas and they work in the Peace Corps or do anything that involves overseas, they come back here and they are used as experts um, or basically case studies about how uh, 
medical work and um, that kind of deal happens in other countries. And they're going to be talking about that uh, tonight at 6.30 p.m., which will pretty much wrap up all your um, educational um, interactive events happening uh, tonight as well. But of course, if you're interested in doing some trivia, I know that uh, there's, uh, let's see. Sorry, I got to check my notes. Trivia, 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 trivia. Um, you got um, trivia night at the um, Broadway Bar and Grill, otherwise known as the Brains on Broadway Trivia at 7.30 p.m. You also got some trivia happening at the Silver Slipper at 7.30. Trivial Beer Suit is going to be at the Press Box at 8.30. And then you got your audio karaoke at the Badlander and the Dark Horse Bar. So those are your some of your late night events happening those nights as well. But I do have an art clip for you guys, and this is uh, from the Big Sky High School kids being featured at the Mizzou Art Museum. If you don't get a chance to see it, here's a little taste. Very special thank to Rick Philp for uh, making those art clips for us to show you. All right, let's talk about some more events that are happening for Thursday. Toastmasters, hey, you want to improve your speaking, uh, public speaking skills? Hey, Toastmasters is a place to be. They meet every Thursday at Perkins at 6.30 a.m. Tiny Tales is happening at the Missoula Public Library. This unique program is held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Babies aged birth to three years of age are invited to attend. They must be accompanied by an adult lap. Um, participants will sing songs, learn finger, fa uh, finger plays, and nursery rhymes, and hear stories. This program is usually held downstairs in the large meeting room, sometimes going to be at the Dragon Rug, unless otherwise specified. Hands-on science, x-rays, and CAT scans at Spectrum Discovery Center tomorrow at 11 a.m. Make it and take it crafts at Big Sky Brand starting at 2.30 in the afternoon. This is a fun activities uh, driven, um, sponsored by the Missoula Public Library. And you can make Valentine's candy and crafts at Big Sky Branch. Registration is not required. But of course, um, the company that made those little chalky I love you uh, hearts of went bankrupt, apparently. Um, so I don't know. Good luck finding those. Um, Lego Club. 3.30 p.m. at Missoula Public Library tomorrow as well, every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. They also have a middle school writers group happening after school most days. Um, you can check those out. Um, Mexican Classics, a Missoula Food Bank and Community Center is doing homemade tortillas, fresh, uh, fresh salsa, and refried beans. A meal of Mexican cuisine is an excellent way to brighten up a midwinter day. Join um, Josie Ramirez for this free cooking class where jo Josie will guide us through traditional ways to make these classes staple right at home. And that's tomorrow at 5 p.m. And it's going to be at the Missoula Food Bank. And they usually have, they have an amazing kitchen and classroom up there. It's Amazing. I took one of those classes. It was really fun. Lady Grizz versus Weber State is happening at the Dahlberg Arena tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And you can check all that out by going to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on here in Missoula? I don't know. Why don't you just check MissoulaEvents.net? There's a lot going on here in Missoula. But most of them, I don't re they, they don't really stand out to me. It's like, well, maybe someday. MissoulaEvents.net.
All right, guys, I just want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Tonight is orientation, so if you want to be involved with MCAT, create your own show, content for Charter Cable Channel 189 and beyond, you can b show up at 530. You can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can email us, mcat at mcat.org, to, um, to ask and inquire, but of course, you can always go to mcat.org to learn more information. And without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good weekend.